quite frankly, this is no engagement right here. Right, as I move it, still, still, still. That's a lot more strength. What's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And on the last video, we talked about how strength, right, can help increase your power through the ball and help you hit the ball with a little bit more stability. Now, from time to time, I run into players who have the muscles to hit the ball hard and strong, but they aren't using their muscles properly. Well, I guess a good thing about not using your muscles is you can literally be out there and hit balls all day long and not get tired, but what's the point if you're not hitting high quality shots, right? The reason why we train so hard to develop strength and endurance is to leave it all out there on the tennis court. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about running around on defense. I'm talking about using your muscles, getting your muscles into the shot on offense. And it took me quite a few years to learn how to do that. All right, so that's what we'll be talking about over the next few videos. So if you can, before we start, hit that subscribe button and that bell because we're gonna do some follow-up videos that go deeper on this topic, all right? Now I wanna preface this video by saying I understand that technique matters quite a bit. And strength without technique is extremely limited. But understand, right, technique and strength go hand in hand. If you don't have access to your strength when you hit, when you hit the ball, then I'm gonna guess your technique isn't very good, okay? Think about that, let that really sink in. If you're not accessing your strength as you hit, you probably have pretty poor technique. So that's why today we're gonna to talk and introduce to you the concept of the box. Now, it's not just tennis, but many other sports. Basketball, when you're guarding the ball handler, right? You get your hands out like this. In ballet, the power position is with the arms out in front Okay, see this inner box I'm creating? You know, with the elbows out, all right? And in tennis, that's gonna be the consistent theme on everything from our ready position to our ground strokes, right? To our recovery. Now let's start with the shoulders, okay guys? If you've ever been to the gym and done shoulder raises like this, all right, these are engaged shoulders. These are completely limp shoulders. So therefore, for you to engage your shoulder strength as, as you hit the ball here, here, you need to get your elbows up and out of your body, which is what the box allows you to do. All right, when you watch all the best players hit Federer and Nadal, the elbows are always out of the body, okay? And what this allows you to do, see, it helps me keep my structure here, here. You never see the elbows collapse. Once your elbows collapse, you're not using your shoulders through the ball. Now, some players actually do have bad technique and, you know, collapse their elbows and, and pull their body, you know, and pull with their body and they're hitting with the wrong set of muscles or their body weight to compensate. Some players are probably just plain lazy because it does take strength, right? It takes arm strength to keep these out and create space, right? And some players probably, and this is more for the beginner intermediate players, probably just don't have the strength. So even if they try to do it, they can't do it, all right? But if, if you do have the muscles, look, you know, again, this space, one of my coaches, he made it very simple. His role was always, Air out, air out the armpits. You see this, it creates space right here. It allows me to use my arm strength compared to having to compensate by using, by leaning or using my body weight. Dominant team is a great example for many things and getting his strength and getting his arms engaged and into the ball is definitely one of them. That space underneath the elbow now allows the shoulder to really push through the ball. Another great example would be Andre Agassi, a little blast from the past, and we're gonna talk about him and his backhand a little bit later in this video. All right, now guys, we're gonna do a quick little demo. I'm gonna show you what it looks like to hit with these collapsed shoulders, and it ends up looking like this little T-Rex arm. There's only elbow wrist instead of shoulder elbow wrist. And as a coach, when I'm watching players and I see, see this elbow pressed in against the body, right, all players can do is like, you know, use their bicep and, and forearm to hit the ball like this, or they have to start leaning like this for power, right? So it'll look kind of like, like that, right? And they have to use their body weight. Now I'm gonna get my arms out, get that space and swing through it, right? 
and th that's a lot more strength. Okay, now there are two ways to do this. The first way, you've probably seen Andre Agassi. He has his arms a lot straighter, right, and, and out and kind of away from his body, right, getting his elbows out. That's very similar to if you watch Rafael Nadal when he hits like this, he gets a lot of exten extension for more of a Western grip, okay? That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is if you ever watch Marat Safin, when he makes contact, he's had one of the best backhands of all time, but his elbows are much closer to his body like this, but you still see this space. You still see a little bit of air under the armpits right here, right? But you see how the structure is still strong like this? It was never like this, right? The structure here, structure here with the elbows out, okay? And same with, maybe the equivalent would be Jack Sock with a more of a Western grip who hits the ball closer to his body, but you still see, again, that little bit of space so that the, you can use your arm strength through, through the shot as well, not just your, your body going through the ball there, okay? When you watch any of the pros hit, you never see them leaning on the ball or falling into the ball with their body weight. They're always perfectly centered to keep their center of balance. So when you're out there hitting, yes, use your legs, use your body, but rem remember it's a very subtle movement. Make sure the arm is engaged in finishing through on every single shot. So good, we've gotten the elbows out. Now the next thing that's extremely important when creating the box is allowing you to engage your core strength, right, for power and stability, all right? So what the box allows you to do in getting your arms out, what it does is it helps me activate my core because now my shoulders are engaged, all right? Now, wherever you are at home, if you're just sitting there watching this, stand up and try this really quickly, okay? Stand up, get your arms out in a nice strong box and keep your, hold your arms still. Now to hold your arms still out here, you should feel your core just a little, activate just a little bit, just engage just a little bit, right? And you can make any exercise a little bit more difficult by holding your arms out like this. Now, try to just very briefly do some shuffle steps to the right, to the left. As you're moving, you, you, can, you can feel the core engagement, right? Just still a little bit. Now, go completely limp, floppy arms like this, and now shuffle like this. It's much, much easier with limp arms because now you aren't engaging your muscles, you aren't activating your core. So as I hit, I want to be, see I'm moving like this, I want to be engaging my core every single time before the shot. All right guys, now we're going to do a quick little demo. And when we talk about hitting with strength in the box, it begins long before you make contact, but on the preparation, okay? So as you can see me here, I'm getting ready and getting set. I'm going to hit my split step, nice strong box, right? I'm going to again, feel my core strength, I can feel it already, right, just a little bit of activation. I'm going to feel it all the way from my split step to unit turn, all the way into the shot here. And what I see is a lot of players, they, they hit their, once they hit their split, there's no muscle engagement. Their, their arms are down like this, their elbows are in and collapsed. So they move to the ball like this, and then they have to re-engage their muscles and hit. It's so hard to re-engage. Now, if you're playing someone who hits the ball two miles an hour, yeah, it's, it takes less energy to rest like this because you have like 10 seconds and then you can re-engage and hit. But if you're playing, you know, the higher and higher level you play, the ball's coming back faster. You have to stay engaged, boom, here the whole time, you know, boom, right? And so that's what we want to do. Now, I'm going to hit the first ball right here and, and show you guys what, what most players look like, okay? So, so feed me. So see, so disengage and then re-engage right here and then hit. Right? It's very hard to do. It's like basketball trying to, trying to defend and, like this and then all of a sudden defend. Right? I'm gonna, I want to stay engaged from, from the moment I hit my split to the moment I hit the ball. Okay, it's going to look like this. Right? I stay engaged the whole way through. One more time. Hold. <clears throat> right? And that's strength from start to finish. And we're going to recover the exact same way. Now, I'll, there are two ways to do this, guys, because when we talk about the box, you can see as I get my arms a little further away from my body here, it doesn't even look that much further away. It just looks like regular, right? But if you watch yourself on tape, a lot of players kind of do some stuff like this, right? But really, there are two ways to do it. So I get my hands out a little bit further, which is good because the elbows are out. But the other style is with, with your racket a little closer to your body because you don't see all the pros doing this. If you remember Andy Roddick, 
he had his racket much closer to his body, but see how his elbows were still out like this? Okay, this is more the Andy Roddick ready position, right? And he moves to the ball like this. He never, he didn't have his elbows in and collapse, never collapse and weak, always out and strong. So there are two ways to do this, but I do recommend if you're hearing about this concept for the very first time, get them out a little bit more and a little bit higher, just so you can really feel this from start to finish when you're playing, when you're hitting, okay? Dominic Team has an exaggerated box. He gets the arms so far up and out away from his body. And you're gonna see on this next backhand, right from the split step, immediate unit turn in, into that box. He gets that racket very high, almost above his head. And the more up and out you get that racket, the more core strength it's going to take due to the increased leverage, but Dominic Team himself has admitted that he's obsessed with core strength. All right guys, so we got the elbows out and that's a really great concept to maintain your structure and your strength you know, before and through the ball, but that's really only the first step. The second step is learning how to stabilize the racket. So ideally, when I'm hitting the ball, when I'm moving to the ball and before I hit the ball and I hit my split step, I'm keeping my racket very, as still as possible. So remember, the, your core strength, the job of your core is to keep your body still, is to keep everything still as you move and as you hit, right? So it, it not only takes my arms, but my core, right? You see how I hold the racket still before I go into that acceleration? I want to use this analogy. I think it's a, it's a good analogy. So right now you're watching this video and the camera is set on a gimbal, right? That reduces any shaking, wobbling, or, or human error, so the footage comes out, you know, still comes out good. And that's the exact same thing your muscles are doing with your racket on, on every single shot, holding still and hitting, okay? What I see is a lot of players, when they're moving to the ball, I, I see stuff like this. You see how my rack is bobbing up and down? Like, it, it's, it's not still right here, okay? Now, it's a little bit counterintuitive because you would think actually extraneous movement like this takes, takes more energy. That's actually incorrect. It, it takes more energy and more muscle and more strength to hold still. Imagine if you were doing a plank like this, right? Actually, if you were to squirm and turn and, and adjust, it's easier than holding perfectly still like this, right? And, and the same thing when you hit a stroke, you hold perfectly still. And when you watch all the pros hit, Right? Obviously, if, there's, if the ball is coming fast and they go right into their stroke, but they're always still on the setup. If there's time, they're always completely still like this. You never see this kind of bobbing up and down. Right? Look, just take a look at Novak Djokovic's backhand. Okay? He's just still here. Right? And that's what kind of creates those clean lines, guys. He's still, he's stabilizing the racket. You see it stop. He's stabilizing in his hands with his core, and then he, he hits the ball. Okay, the same with Roger's one-hander. Again, creating that box, that power position. A lot of times you'll see that pause right here, like pause, and then boom, goes right into that acceleration. Right, you don't see, you never see Roger on his forehand when he's setting up, just, you know, go like this, right? The box, guys, is a little bit more subtle of a concept. Djokovic will just go right into his smooth acceleration. Obviously, he's still getting to, and hitting the box at one point or another but only if there's time he'll hold, maybe on like this one right here, hold for a split second, and then proceed with his swing. Here's a bit more obvious with Roger on a slower ball, he'll hold still, and then fire, on this inside out, still, and then fire, and he has a very fast acceleration right from that held box position. This next one, Roger's gonna hit a put away forehand with more time, hold still, and then fire. Again, right from the box, same with Rafa, stabilizing the racket in the hand, and then accelerating through, and there's a reason why the pros do this. Now, just because you're holding that box out and still with that racket not wobbling, doesn't mean you have to take a small swing like Roger or Rafa sometimes do. Like the student here, he, with this slow put-away forehand, He's still holding the box out still, but he's taking a much bigger swing, which is probably for the average person what it's going to look like. Again, holding still and then accelerating. So when you're using the box in matches, let's say tomorrow or the next day, don't go changing your tempo because you're doing the box. Okay, unless you know how to shorten and elongate your swing, which 
we'll cover it in a different video. Keep everything the same. So when we talk about one-handed strokes, so obviously it's easier to stabilize when you have two hands instead of one, but nonetheless, you need to be able to stabilize with one-handed strokes. Like on your guys' forehands, you need to keep this racket head still right here as you move, but it's also essential you keep your left hand still to stabilize as well. So both hands are still, you see that? Boom, as you hit, right? Some players can't even get this left arm out, and I'm like, you know, you gotta use your muscles to get it out and hold it, hold it still. One of my coaches would always use, really, the, 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 the example of imagine you're holding a glass of water in your hand as you're moving, right? I can already feel my core strength right here, right? No wobbles, no spilling, you gotta hold that still. So, guys, maybe the easiest way to wrap this concept up and remember it is the two heads rule, all right? You gotta keep your head still and your racket head still as you move, all right? So, for my split step here, two heads and the same distance between each one, still, right? Split, still, right? As I move, it's still, still, still. And again, this takes a lot of strength. It's gonna help you create clean line stability and help you really engage your muscles in hitting because quite frankly, this is no engagement right here, right? When I'm hitting, if, if I'm bobbing around like that. To practice this, we're going to use a very simple circle drill, keeping a very strong box. This is actually an exaggerated box. You wouldn't necessarily do this in the match, but you could, all right? It's gonna be a little bit more tiring again to hold still the whole time. But this is the two heads rule. His head is very still as he moves. His racket head is very still as he moves. This is very stable and he's accelerating right there. Okay, holding still, accelerating right there. And you wouldn't necessarily do this in a match. It's great for drilling, so I highly recommend, again, first time hearing about this concept, please do that circle drill and hold very still with the two heads rule like that. When you have this feeling ingrained, and the two heads roll becomes very natural. You're able to feel your core strength on every ball. You won't have to keep your arms up that high all the time, but you're gonna be able to access your strength whenever you need it. So guys, if you're not used to stabilizing with your elbows out and keeping the strong box and structure, this will actually feel a lot more tiring at first. Okay, especially if you aren't used to it, it's kind of like hitting the gym for the first time. But if you have the muscles, your muscles will acclimate and hitting, will, hitting with strength will feel normal, feel just like anything else. Now I want to end by saying this because, you know, just on when we talk about perfect technique, perfect technique does not mean, it shouldn't be effortless in the sense like there's no energy like this, right? Because a lot of times when we talk about having perfect technique, it gives you access to your muscles. It gives you access to your strength. So if you weren't using those muscles before, it will definitely be more tiring, right? Like bending my knees is obviously more tiring than standing straight, but should I stand straight every time I hit? Probably not. Should I just slap at the ball like this? That takes less energy, right? What you should be really concerned about is are you getting a proportionate return on your investment, an increase in power for the amount of energy you're expending. Guys, so when we talk about effortless power, like as coaches and things like that, right? Yes, there are some concepts, right? Like great timing, you know, hitting, hitting the sweet spot, perf you know, knowing your contact point, having a highly refined kinetic chain. Those are concepts where that don't take additional energy, right? To hit the ball harder. We can get, I guess, power with less effort, but it only goes, it has a limit, right? You know, if you don't layer strength on top of that. All right, so in the next video, we are going to talk about the box and show you how it, you, how to use it in a match, how to use it and it, how it combines with various of the concepts that I've taught in the past. So don't miss it. Hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys soon on the next episode. Commissioner! <laughs>